Here. Sick. All right. We're doing it. We're doing our first live stream. This is great. Hey, give me a sound check. Everybody can hear me okay? I see some thumbs up in the chat. I think this is how you're supposed to do it, right? Well, cool. All right. Here's what we're going to do today. I've never done one of these before. I'm hoping that it goes well in terms of like people learn something or people like get some kind of community out of this. What I have is I have a bunch of my favorite medical history books. Here's a little stack. We got, we got all kinds of books that I've either talked about on the channel before um, or I've recommended or used as part of my research. And so what I want to do is give people who like medical history books some kind of resource for this is a good place to start. It might not be like your cup of tea exactly, but maybe there's like some uh, something that resonates with you here. And so along the way, I would love to hear what some of your favorite history books are. I think I've got some of them in the stacks already, but everybody has different tastes. So I'm curious to hear what everybody has. Um, here's what I mean by like my favorites. What I tend to like are really explicit deep dives into one particular topic, heavily cited sources. I love going into primary material, as you can probably tell like by the kind of videos I make. And I hope that the kind of, the, the books that I get are gonna be more deep dive and less like a collection of facts. And so what I wanna do is actually start off with like the only exception in my in my stack here, at least I think, given given the the books that I have, uh, this one is kind of like the most cursory. So this one has been recommended to a bunch of me, a bunch of uh, through a bunch of people in the comments, and that is Quackery. Um, this one you've probably seen on store shelves if you like frequent bookstores in like the last like two to three years. I think it came out right before the pandemic, um, and I love this one. This one is. Not like giving away too much and therefore running like some copyright stuff. This one is just a good overview of some of the, like the things in medicine that have been tried that weren't quite hits. Some of which did re, uh, did lead to um, eventual cures and and like relevant pharmaceuticals. But like it's it's shallow. It is a shallow but wide dive into stuff that used to work or uh, stuff that people used to like. So I like this one. Um, it wouldn't be the kind of thing that I like really sink my teeth into, but I think if there's going to be an intro book, I think Quackery is a pretty good one. Um, I think it would make a, like, I don't know, I hate to say like it'd be a good gift up to the holidays, um, but I like this one. I'm not going to say anything bad about it. It is not as deep as I would have liked to them. Um, next one, and I'll, I'll take questions as they come along, like between each book, I feel like that's when I'll start to respond to the chat. Again, new at this, first live stream. Um, and so I love hearing what people are from. We got Tito from Atlanta. This is great. I love Atlanta. Uh, the Coca-Cola history, Coca-Cola Museum has some cool medical history in it. Obviously, like Coca-Cola is not what it uh, what it used to be. It has, used to have like that cocaine reference. Um, Kyra, clearly with a great last name. Thank you, Kyra Kelly. Thank you. I'm glad that you can learn from them. Uh, that one right there, I'm not sure how we pronounce it, Z-R-O there, field of study. So my background is actually not in medicine per se. My first degree was kinesiology, which uh, is basically like physics applied to anatomy. And so that set me up to be a physical therapist or like eventually try to get into physical therapy. I was an, at an athletic trainer for the first part of my career, which is kind of like the on like the side of a football field, guy who rushes out onto um, the field to do the initial injury evaluation. There's a lot of stuff that happens off the field as well. Um, that one is what folks overseas might know as a physiotherapist, L like not quite the same, but um, it's a pretty good overlap. All right, let's get into the next one. So kind of on the opposite side of like breadth and width, we're gonna go with um, Lindsay Fitaris's book. This one is her newest one, it's called The Face Maker. This one is about kind of the rise of plastic surgery um, in World War I and one particular surgeon. Um, if you know Lindsay, it is because like she came out with this incredible book back in 2018, I think, uh, called The Butchering Art. It was about Joseph Lister and the rise of antiseptic surgery. And that one was a hit. It sold fantastically. It got her on the Joe Rogan podcast. Um, it got her a massive following. And now she's just killing it. She's probably like the most followed medical history, social media person out there. Um, and so I was really looking forward to The Face Maker. This one was like a pretty strict biography and less like establishing context about the field of plastic surgery and then telling this guy's story. It was a fairly like standard, here, let's follow this guy's life and then what kind of impact it made. Um, the cool thing about that is that like when you contrast the butchering art to Face Maker, 
the butchering art was a lot of background about germ theory and how like Joseph Lister was able to use that, the influence of Louis Pasteur and Robert Liston, kind of one of the surgical mentors. And this one is more like, let's start with Gillies, the uh, protagonist of the story, and then tell the story, get a little bit more into legacy as we go on. Um, so this one was a great, this one was a great read. I, and I'm not going to do anything with it in terms of like turning it into a script. I just loved getting to read it and, um, and enjoy the story for what it was. All right. Cool. We're doing great. I, I have to go pretty fast through these because I've got so many books that I want to tell people about. Um, we're going to go with, uh, what do I want to go with next? We'll go with a, a paperback. Okay. This one is Dr. Mooter's Marvels. Um, if anybody's been to the Mooter Museum in Philadelphia, this is the story of the, uh, of the founder of Dr. Robert Mooter. Um, this was a great book and actually introduced me to the Mütter Museum in general. I had not heard of it, and I would go on to do a digital internship with the Mütter Museum, and I've actually like I've made um, YouTube videos for them. Um, in part, there are some great ones that I'm proud of. They've they've if you've been following their story the last like couple months, they have not been having an easy time uh, responding to some of the changes that their leadership wants to do with like what do we do with some of these remains that might not have been like ethically uh, acquired. But the actual story of the founding was like much more wholesome. It was. A, a surgeon who would do reconstructive surgeries on folks that had like some some pretty wicked like facial deformities with the idea that like hey if we like can give them a like fairly innocuous appearance and they can rejoin society they can get a job and they can get you know out of poverty um and so i thought that this story was was heartwarming and then for the sake of introducing me to the mutter museum i this book has a special place in my heart so love this one again it's not one i'm going to turn into a video any day soon. I um, still love working with the Mütter Museum and there's still you know great folks over there, curators, uh, a friend and doing really cool stuff. All right, so we got the Mütter, we got the green books. Let's do one more green book. All right, uh, this one, a lot of you have probably read because this is one of the most famous science writers of all time. This is Mary Roach. And this book is called Stiff, uh, The Curious Live of Human Cadavers. What's cool about it, oh, sorry, I accidentally did some. What's cool about this book is that it is a collection of stories. So it is like, it's more journalistic than it is like expose necessarily. It is not like one person like sitting in a library and researching old documents and doing medical history. It is, the, the history part comes within the context of the stories that she is telling. And so she'll go around to like, you know, to a body farm and seeing how, and see like how scientists study decomposition. Um, one of the stories that is like medical history adjacent is, um, I believe it was in Massachusetts where somebody tried to weigh the weight of a human soul. So basically putting somebody on a bed, on a scale as they were dying, waited for them to die, and then looked at the difference in weight um, before and after death, uh, which has mostly been viewed as like a sham experiment, but it's still kind of an interesting story. So Stiff, uh, if you like Mary Roach, if you like comedy, then this is a great book for you. If, if you haven't read Mary Roach before, she sneaks a ton of humor into the footnotes of her um, of her writing. And so like you learn something, but you also get like the little like, and here's what I was reacting to. Here's what I was thinking like while I was uh, while I was researching this. She's fantastically funny. And she has a, a Bay Area base as well. Um, for those who don't know, I am in the San Francisco Bay Area and she is uh, close by in Oakland. Okay, next up, um, looking at the chat. Sweet, all right, we can keep on going. Uh, I'm going to start with one of, or I'm going to go into another one, which has been, this was a surprisingly good book. I, you'll see why I bought it in a second, but it ended up being a fantastic, like underrated book. And it is Vagina Obscura by Rachel Gross. This one is fantastic. Basically what it did is uh, it took reproductive anatomy and then wrote a chapter about like individual body part or individual pieces of anatomy. So one about like the egg cell, one about like, uh, I mean, labia minora, labia majora, um, uterus, uh, cervix, like each one of these has like an entire chapter dedicated to it. Not necessarily like the history of the anatomy of that body part, but like a story that was, that was relevant to that body part. Um, without giving anything away, like the discovery of the human egg cell was a huge deal, right? Like it was, it's one of the larger, um, cells by size of the human body, whereas sperm is like one of the tiniest and how scientists discovered and, and identified that cell like was like finding a needle in a haystack. Really cool, like history of science story, but also like very humanizing story too, because as you can imagine, like reproductive anatomy is incredibly personal. And so these stories get both emotional, but you also feel like you learn something. Um, this one was great for, I mean, again, I'm, I, am I gonna turn any of these into, into scripts? Not necessarily, but I enjoyed all of this one. I, I, I could not stop reading this one. I finished this one super quick. All right, so that was, 
Vagina Obscura. Uh, next up, we'll do the first book that I actually covered on this channel, and that was Aroused by Randy Hutter Epstein. Um, this one, I actually, this is, I should actually give a bit, a bit of backstory. So this is the book that started like my love of medical history. Um, the story with this is I was walking around San Francisco one day, popped into a local bookstore and was just like looking at what was on the science shelves. I was reading a lot of like business books back then and self-improvement books back then. And I kind of just wanted to like read something different. And while I had just started my first YouTube channel, Corporus, um, I was looking for like different topics to cover and maybe like this would be an interesting way of presenting endocrinology. As you can kind of see from the title that this book is about the history of hormones. And so like, I thought like if I can use history to get people interested in the science, then I can like try to do, uh, I, I can try to teach the science in a more engaging way. This was more when my goal with the channel was to teach stuff that would be in a classroom as opposed to entertain people. I feel like kind of the, emphasis of the channels have shifted where now I'm primarily entertaining still trying to teach people because I feel like the material is still interesting and valuable but this is the book that kicked off like my ability to use history as a narrative to teach science um this one operates a lot like vagina obscura in the way that it is one hormone that you then get a history of and the stories about so of course like they're covering you know growth hormone um uh testosterone and estrogen, um, insulin. Insulin actually doesn't get a ton of coverage in this book. And this focus is mainly on like late eight, uh, mid through mid 18th through 19th, a little bit of 20th century. Um, and so this book was engaging. I did take notes on this one and I turned it into a series. You'll notice that the, the Cushing video is on my channel now. I did import that one from my old channel. But um, a lot of the other ones, I just don't feel like I don't feel like they held up to my current standards. So like I did one on testosterone, I did one on estrogen. Um, I don't feel like they were, I don't know, I don't feel like they were that good. And so I took them down. I can do them better is what I'm trying to say. I don't need to do them now. So anyway, that one was aroused. This one was a couple of years old, but still I think it's a, a fantastic book. That one, again, obviously I did make videos about. Um, looking at the rest of the stacks, we do actually have like more that I have turned into videos. So those are gonna have a little bit more backstory, but we got a message, Steve, thank you very much. Hey man. That is a that is a great message. Thank you very much. Everybody put into the storytelling so easily put in. Hey, thank you very much. That's that's really nice. Yeah. All right, next one. Um, ooh, let's do one that I'm actually in the progress of reading right now. This one is called The Good Virus by Tom Ireland. This one is about the history of phage therapy. Um, to spoil things a little bit, I don't know as much of a spoiler. I think you can kind of tell the the arc that this is going to go into. But the antibiotic story, the series that I'm working on right now. He's going to next do streptomycin. This is the, the hard drive that I lost. It, don't worry about it. You don't need to worry about this. Then it's tetracyclines, then antibiotic resistance. And then kind of as a follow-up to antibiotic resistance, we're going to talk about phage therapy. And this book is fascinating. Like I did, I did not expect the characters and like the doctors and scientists who um, kind of pioneered phage therapy to be so interesting. Um, I'm not that deep into it. I'm only about a hundred pages into it right now, um, but I'm starting to get the, the indigenous Indian roots, like India, not like native U.S. American um, uh, roots of, of phage therapy. Basically, it was uh, scientists think that they were like phages were present in uh, the River Ganges, and that would uh, these were specifically like bacteria phages that were uh, um, tailored towards cholera bacteria. And so, like people who drank water from that river didn't get cholera as much. Um, and so, actually, in, in, uh, unlike this book, which we'll talk about in a little bit, which is very cholera centric. Um, it's a fascinating story because it involves both like indigenous science. It involves like some real, I mean, characters of scientists, uh, in the, in the late 19th, early 20th century, um, as well as like some interesting future implications, uh, especially as like antibiotic resistance becomes a, a bigger deal. So this one, I, again, I'm in the progress of reading. I'm taking pretty detailed notes from this one. Um, and then because phages are more understood in modern day, I'm going to be able to cross check that stuff with like more modern research. Whereas a lot of the time, especially if something is back, you know, from like 1850, I'm like reading some primary documents, but a lot of it like requires expertise in order to interpret this stuff. I can read like a modern biology paper pretty easily. Um, and so this, uh, this is going to be a great topic. I'm really looking forward to, um, to covering this one. Like I'm, I genuinely get up like early and excited to read these books. All right, Kyra, thank you. You have an awesome voice for talking. Thank you. That's great. Hey, I actually, I'll, I'll, I'll get a little vulnerable here. 
Um, I did a YouTube series for the channel Seeker, um, which is a, a larger channel. They're based in San Francisco. Um, the series was called Human. It was a 20 video series just doing human biology. And some of the very first comments were like that my voice was annoying, that it was feminine, that I have like a higher voice than usual. That is me getting excited. My voice like goes up an octave. And um, so for like the early part of my YouTube career, I was super self-conscious about my voice. Uh, I don't care anymore because I make money off of talking. So like everybody else can eat it. Um, let's continue the cholera train. Uh, this one is The Ghost Map by Stephen Johnson. This is one of my favorite like deep dive books. I actually hosted a book club um, at the high school I teach at that all read this book. So folks that were getting interested in like medical careers and public health careers, like kind of joined this little book club and they were stoked about it. Um, this is the story of Jon Snow uh, and the cholera epidemics in London from 1830s through 1850s. And this one I did turn into a, uh, into a video. It's about half an hour long. Um, you can see that video right now if you want to after the stream, of course. And this one was great because people kind of know the Jon Snow story. I feel like they, if they got any story that was a history of medicine story or history of science story in junior high, they probably, um, they probably heard this one, maybe a little bit of germ theory. And so this one was great for like giving context to, well, what was epidemiology at the time? What was data collection like and, and mortality statistics at the time? And so this was great to get like a little bit more of a deep dive and context to that story that we've been told, you know, ad nauseum. Um, I recommend this one. This I think would also make like a good intro to medical history book because it is such an engaging story while still like getting plenty of depth into the science. So this one, Ghost Map by Stephen Johnson. Um, also randomly, I heard Bill Clinton recommend this one. So it's, that is what it is. And actually like continuing the theme of presidential recommendations. Um, and we got a, uh, Ah, cool. Okay. Zachary just said, that's where I know you're from, from the Seeker stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That one was wild. That was like 2019. We were going to do season two right as the pandemic hit. We, so we had to um, film some episodes in studio and then some in my house. So my poor roommates were like listening to me, like set up a bunch of camera stuff and record uh, biology videos for hours. So yeah, that was, uh, yeah, the Seeker stuff. Okay. So next one, in terms of presidential recommendations, the great influenza by John M. Barry. I did not, uh, I did not, get this book because George W. Bush recommended it, but like, man, this is an in-depth book. This one was fantastic. Um, this is, you know, the story of the 1918 influenza pandemic, what's sometimes called Spanish flu. And this is a great book. I put it on the same level of influence as The Hot Zone, which is not going to be in this uh, in this pile. I have that book. I just heard too many criticisms of it. And I, I hear that it's like a little bit too sensational. Um, what The Great Influenza does that I love is that it starts like, 50 years before 1918 and gives context to what the medical system was like and why American universities were like starting to get on board with germ theory. Um, for a little bit of context, while European scientists adopted germ theory in like late 70s, 80s, and then really started applying it in the 90s, it took until like the 19 teens for American universities and scientists to get on board with germ theory. And so obviously like that was um, right on time for the 1918 pandemic. And so this was the story of like, how do we get the public health infrastructure in place to respond to 1918 and have the kind of data collection that we did? Because we have like a lot more uh, information about the Spanish flu and how it traveled from like east to west, for instance, what the timeline of each of these waves were um, that we wouldn't have had for an epidemic just like 30 years earlier, for instance. And so this was great from like a book, public health, biology, microbiology, and like medical perspective. This one is not like an intro book by any means, like this is your advanced level um, medical history book, just in terms of like, it takes some patience to get through this thing. But at the same time, like I thought this was such a compelling read as somebody who can like picture who uh, the founders of Johns Hopkins were for us. They go into like the, the founding of Hopkins quite a bit um, as like the exemplary medical school at the time. So this one, I recommend if you're kind of like, I want something to sink my teeth into and uh, that is the great influenza. Uh, should we go with other thick books? Now let's read some. Let's read some comments for a second. Um, mention that you teach outside of YouTube. I always assume that you taught biology course at a university. What do you actually teach? Great question, and it will surprise you because I do not teach like biology at all. So I teach at a prep school in the Bay Area. I'm not going to name it, but I teach business, economics, and physics. None of which I went to school for. The physics is like the most um, the most related because kinesiology my first degree is physics applied to anatomy, 
but still like right now we're talking about circuits and electricity. So like that stuff I, I wasn't prepared for going into it. Um, but I have some great mentor teachers and they had some great curricula for me to follow. And so like as a science communicator and somebody who's been doing that for such a long time now, I feel like my expertise is in synthesizing information and presenting it to an audience. And at the, you know, at the high school level, you don't really need to get into that much depth. You're not, you're not doing research necessarily. You're, you're executing a curriculum. Um, and so that's physics. That's fine. And econ and business, on the other hand, took a little bit more of a learning curve. Um, I was hired for business initially at this school because like this here, like the YouTube channel is like proper new school media. It is a business. I pay taxes. I like an established business. Um, and so like, while I think of this as more of a creative hobby, it is technically a business. And um, the school that hired me saw value in that and decided to bring me on into their business program. After a year of teaching business, I, uh, we saw that there was a vacancy for econ. And so I was like, sure, <laughs> let's try it. How hard can it be? And it turns out like, it's a super interesting topic. I wish that I had taken an econ course before having to teach econ, but it was a, it was a, a, a cool exercise. And like, can I actually synthesize this information over the summer so that I can teach it in the fall? And, uh, and I did, it was fun. I'm, I'm now like in my second year of teaching like this particular set of classes and man, going from like one year of teaching it to a second year, phew, night and day difference. Um, every video we make, keep up the excellent quality. Thank you. Thank you, Zach, appreciate that. Uh, and then Horo, yes, the community post, this is still going, you bet. Um, I have been wanting to do a, uh, I've been wanting to do a live stream all year. My friend Sophie from the excellent channel, Soap's Notes, did a live stream back in January or February. I happened to go to the UK in February after she had just done it, I think. And um, she was like, yeah, you got to try it. And I said, all right, sometime before the year ends. And so here we are. We're, I'm being accountable to Sophie right now. Only got a couple left. Let's go ahead and do, ah, okay. With the antibiotics um, series. This book is probably my recommendation of the day. This is Miracle Cure by William Rosen. This has been without a doubt, like the greatest inspiration for this series in terms of like how some of my narrative goes. It is not like just translating the book. I wish it were that easy. Um, this has been like a good jumping off point for like, all right, let me dig into this patent. Let me dig into this business relationship. Let me read more about Nazis because of course, sulfonilamide, Pronticil had to. Um, this is a book largely about the history of antibiotics. And it starts with a little bit of prehistory, a little bit of like before Fleming, but really it starts the story with um, kind of like germ theory and then getting into the sulfa drugs. And so like I took a lot of my chapter or a lot of my video titles and like themes of the video from different chapters. Again, it doesn't follow it exactly. Like this book spends two chapters on penicillin to kind of like Fleming. And then after Fleming, I decided to combine those into one like mega video. Um, it goes into antibiotic resistance, but like, of course this book was published, I wanna say early 2000s, give me a second here. Um, this book was published in 2017. And so like antibiotic resistance is such a pressing concern, even in the last six years, like there's going to be a ton more research and ways to keep myself current. And so like for the antibiotic resistance video that I have planned for hopefully, hopefully end of November, but please, you know, give me some grace. Um, I'm going to have to do a lot more outside of a book reading in order to, um, in order to get that, uh, complete and give myself just like a good understanding of the world of antibiotic resistance. Luckily, I've also got like a bunch of great friends that are taking the time to help me. Um, my friend Marin, also from Seeker, actually, she's a microbiologist and actually like has her master's degree in microbio. And um, every now and then I get to like throw ideas off of her. She's fantastic. She has a great YouTube channel too, Marin Hunsberger. So this one, again, this is, I don't know if I would recommend this as like a, a beginner's book, but this one was like really, really great to sink my teeth into. I took such detailed notes out of this one um, that again, became the series that you guys have been watching. All right, I gotta make sure that this does not fall over. Okay, uh, probably the one, ooh, okay, what else we got? All right, that was an exciting thing you're sharing. You're definitely great at exposing topics in depth into the, hey, thank you very much. Oh man, a dermatologist. Ah, man, I could never. I, I thank you for what you do. You're truly great. Uh, I learned about a lot of diseases named after someone. I think it's an interesting video that could be an ep eponymous diseases named after, re yeah, Nazi researchers and physicians. Yeah, and actually one that, would like to do but don't really know how to approach that one other than like why are why do doctors specifically seem to be so fond of eponyms um it is it is almost like a trope that 
physicians especially have like a degree of hero worship that you don't see in a ton of other fields. I don't know if anybody comes from other um, other fields of science, maybe you can say something to the contrary, but it seems like, yeah, I mean, doctors love their eponyms. Um, yeah, we'll table it. All right, the one that always gets recommended to me that I still have not made it all the way through is of course, The Emperor of All Maladies. This one is has been like the best-selling medical history book on Amazon for years now. And as much as I, Again, I want to be able to finish this thing. It is massive. It's over 450 pages. It is well cited. There are a bunch of like smaller stories within that the author tries to tell. And it just, it takes some effort. Um, it takes some effort to get through it. And so I, I, I get interrupted by other books as I continue to try to read this one. This one I have been nibbling at for like about a year. Um, and so it's a, it's a good book. It also like, I, I, know that because people want me to read it, I like have a little bit of resistance to reading it. I want to just like read the books that I want to read. And so I, I know it's a well-hearted, uh, it's, it's a well-intentioned recommendation, but man, this one is just hard to get through. Um, I don't know. Do y'all have opinions about this one? Again, like this is the most recommended, um, this is the most recommended of the, of the books that I get. Okay. Looking at that, no one mentioned in my school, really which ones, the diseases, diseases named after someone or the or the ones named after researchers and physicians. The one that comes to mind for me is the um, the lung cells called club cells. Uh, these are books, or I'm sorry, these are books. These are um, cells, I believe, in the alveoli that are. Oh gosh, are they are they simple cuboidal cells? There's some type of epithelial cells that were um, uh, named after a, a researcher, um, but they have been renamed as club cells. Oh, they were called yeah, they were called Clara cells. C L ARA renamed club cells so that people wouldn't have to re, um, remember something that was very different. Uh, Emperor is a great audiobook. I'll probably have to do that. I, I need more podcast recommendations too. And so, like, maybe just doing this thing on audiobook is going to be the best way to do it. Do you have any suggestions for re rhetoric, such literature, and medicine by any chance? Ooh, can you, give, can you clarify that one, Michael? I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to see if I have recommendations. Uh, the one that jumps to mind right now is a book. I don't want to go grab it because it's on the other side of the room. Um, but this one book called On Immunity, which is a book that John Green recommended on a stream one time um, that I thought was really good. It's a short little book about kind of how people can reframe how they think about immunity and herd immunity and vaccination, basically coming from a, a mother that was like vaccine hesitant for her kid. And then after learning as much as she could and actually like meeting with immunologists and everything arrived like, yes, vaccination is like a, a uh, net positive for humanity. Um, yeah. So interesting. I, I don't know if that's what you're talking about, but feel free to clarify in the, in the questions or in the comments. All right, let's get into another one that i made into a video and that is black death at the golden gate. Um, again, as somebody from the San Francisco Bay area, like having a book that is like, medical history in my backyard meant a lot to me. Um, this one I saw at a local bookstore in San Francisco, uh, actually in the Ferry Building, um, which is a great little bookstore. And they tend to have like a pretty like good uh, set of like rotating. I don't know if anybody's actually here from the Bay Area or will watch this uh, from the Bay Area, uh, but just shouting out local bookstores because they do great work. So this one is about um, the third bubonic plague uh, epidemic that we've had. The first one was the plague of Justinian. The second one was the Black Death, which of course is the most popular one. And then the third one was when we actually knew or were learning a little bit more about the uh, microbiology of plague. So being caused by Yersinia pestis, being transmitted by like fleas on rodents, and a little bit more about like the epidemiology of plague. And this is the story of like how it went from Asia, Hawaii, and then eventually came to San Francisco and kind of the public health response that went on there. Um, the video I made is a couple years old now. I think I would have done some things differently. I think there was a lot more depth that I could have gotten into in that in that story. Um, but I was like, I made that one because I thought the story was fascinating and I wanted to get the story out there. And I also wanted to use that video as an excuse to try doing a video that was outside of the studio. Because up until that point, I had really only done stories like from my bedroom in front of a teleprompter. And I hadn't done much that was outside and like using B-roll footage and like presenting in some place that was not um, not my room. And so like, I'm proud of it for what it was, but I feel like if I were to make it today, I would go into much more depth. It would probably be twice the, the video length that it is now. Uh, but at the same time, like Caitlin Doty already made that video on Ask a Mortician. So you're not gonna do it better than her. Oh, good, we got some, uh, we got some exposure here in the 
in the chat. First exposure to measured books was the Immortal Life of Henry Adelax. Yep, I got that one. Um, do you ever think of going into the Gila cell line story? It would be interesting. It would be interesting. I I feel like other people have done that story better. I feel like um, I have that I have that book. I've made it a little bit of the way through that. I haven't finished that one either. But that is a fantastic story, and I, I think a lot of people's first exposure to it. I'm wondering if anybody had that one recommended to them in school. Like if anybody actually saw that one, uh, read that one in class. I know it's being recommended to more and more. Um, like high school science classes. Yep, we got some of those conditions named after folks. Yep, the family been recently apologized to and compensated as far as the, the Gila line, tenderloin. Uh, so, okay, Sailor Moon is, is commenting here. Um, yeah, so where the story took place. In this book, I believe, is a map of where it took place, but obviously like it happened all around town. Um, like some of the first shots are from Angel Island, which used to be like a quarantine zone in the middle of, of San Francisco Bay. Um, if you can think of like where Alcatraz is, then you're kind of in the same ballpark. Again, it's just in the middle of the bay. You would have to take a boat to get there. And folks like coming in from the Pacific would have to stop there in order to then like dock at the piers um, where they are today. And then Taylor Moon is talking about uh, Chinatown. Um, Tenderloin, as far as I know, was not what it was today. Like the reputation that the Tenderloin has today is not what it was back then. I'm looking for maps in this uh, in the book, and I'm not finding any immediately, so I'm not going to waste your time any longer. Now, now I mean it for real. Uh, we got somebody from Sudan. Welcome. So anyway, that was Black Death of the Golden Gate. All right, love all the interaction in the chat too. This is fantastic. I've only got a couple left. I got four left. Um, actually, speaking of San Francisco, that's a transition into this book. Actually, uh, the Making of Mr. Gray's Anatomy. This one is a book about the history of the book, Grey's Anatomy. Um, so you'll notice a different spelling, G-R-A-Y, the show itself, Grey's Anatomy, G-R-E-Y. I'm really well rehearsed with this because last week I gave a talk in San Francisco, which is a relation to this book, um, at an event called Nerd Night. And um, I put that up on my community tab, like telling you all that it was happening. Um, if you haven't been to a Nerd Night, it is basically like a lecture in a bar. And so you'll get like all these people who are not necessarily scientists, but science enthusiasts who are coming together, having drinks, like listening to fun lectures. Um, oftentimes they're like something that is not like, you know, cutting edge, really cool uh, bio or chemistry. It is just like something that is entertaining. And so I did my talk on the history of Gray's Anatomy with a tie into like, you know, you've probably heard of the show. And so let's get, ex let's get some explanation about like what it was named after. Um, this is one of the very first like medical history topics that I covered as well back on Corpus on the first uh, on the first channel that I did. Um, and what I love about this book, it's actually pretty short in comparison to some of the other books that I've that I've been re reviewing today. But what I love about this book is there's not a ton of primary research on the figure of Henry Gray, the author of Grace Anatomy. The illustrator Henry Van Dyke Carter kept a really thorough uh, diary, though, and so we we know a lot about Henry Gray through the relationship to his illustrator, uh, Carter. Where this book also excels in terms of like bringing in research is bringing in context. So Richardson, uh, let me just make sure you can see here. Richardson is, is a huge, she's an English historian. She's a scholar of like poverty and dissection, like a fantastic overlap, not like in terms of being fun, but like in terms of being well suited to make this book, she's the perfect historian for that. Um, she has a book that came out before this called I think like the death, destitute and death, something like that. They're basically not a prequel to this book necessarily, but like how different legislation it, during the industrial revolution affected how the poor were treated. And then how like that fed into um, dissection and medical schools, grave robbing, all that stuff. So this book is a very like, it is incredibly niche. It is for like maybe two of you out there who are watching. Um, but I would recommend like this author, especially if you are into a little bit more like, you know, the, the social side of medicine. Um, and have like a soft, spot, uh, a soft spot for the poor. This was a good book. Again, very niche, but I thought it was really well done. All right, getting into some of the comments. All right, we got Sudan, we got Denmark, we got Colombia. Man, we got just like tons of continents rec uh, represented here. Clearly like North America, South America. This is fantastic. Um, Soleil, hope I'm saying that right. Your videos about the plants and meds makes me remember my first year in pharmacy school. Sweet. Pharmaco okay, let me see if I got this right. Pharmacognosy class had some weird and interesting information. Awesome. We'd love to hear some of your recommendations for videos about um, uh, pharmaceuticals you thought were interesting. Going into next year, I for sure I'm going to do aspirin and Tylenol or paracetamol. Um, I have been wanting to do that video for a long time. I've just been thinking about how I want to do it because other channels have done like the history of aspirin. That one is a fun story because it goes like 
people knew that willow was a pain reliever and fever reducer. And now like aspirin became one of the first like isolated chemicals to become a pharmaceutical available over the counter. And so like that story has been done a bunch of times, but I've been thinking about like how I want to actually approach that story. Um, I'm probably going to do it under the angle of like, why are there so many painkillers? And then talk about the evolution from aspirin to, um, uh, to Tylenol too, because they're actually like more related than people think. So I want to get into that. Uh, the crisis of the red zone, is that, that's the follow-up to the hot zone, right? The story of the deadliest Ebola outbreak in history. Apparently it is great. Was that the, the Richard Preston sequel? Let me let it know. Um, yeah, Sailor Moon with a comment. Yeah, it's, I, I still love the city. I still, I still love San Francisco. I want to see it be better. And so I'm sticking around. All right, cool. And thank you for the, the follow-up comment. All right, I got three more. Uh, let's do, let's do another work in, no, let's do a fun one actually right now to bring it up from like death and dissection. Um, this one, another surprising hit. This one is fantastic. Strange Bedfellows by Ina Park. Um, this is, uh, this is from another like San Francisco author. I think she's at UCSF, is a professor there. This is the history of certain STIs and I love it. Um, I really want to do a video about the history of HPV because I feel like as ter in terms of public health stories that were successes, then HPV is like the poster child because you had like not only like lab scientists working on um, identifying a causative agent, but you also had like a massive public health campaign to get like young people vaccinated where you really had to convince parents, especially to like to get vaccinated. Um, the fact that it has ties into like both cancer and infectious disease, I think is a, a great story of showing how scientific fields can overlap. Um, so I really want to do a video about HPV. I want to do a video about syphilis at some point, but because it has such it has such a history within like not just STI history, but like medical history at large. Um, if you saw the miasma video, you know that like syphilis was one of the, the diseases that broke the miasma model and started leading into the contagion and germ theory model. And so like, there's so much that we can do with, with syphilis um, for a video topic. Um, we can do an entire video about mercury and syphilis. Uh, gonorrhea is another fascinating one. Chlamydia is like a strangely interesting one, but like this entire, like, this entire book is is so good in terms of like tracing how people actually learned about these different diseases. And then um, I think that if you like my channel, then each of these chapters is like a Patrick Kelly video in terms of like how everything is formatted and um, takeaways that you would get from it. So anyway, I, I love this book. This one might also be like a good intro book if you want to recommend like, hey, you want something that's like a little bit giggly because it's talking about sex, like this would be a great book for you. All right. Uh, what is the best medical histology? You mean medical history book? Uh, because I do like histology too. For me, histology for pathologists and histology, a text and atlas. Of it. Okay, yeah, you are talking about histology then. Yeah. Um, the, what I really, so I have a big like section of histology on my other channel. Um, and I think my favorite thing about studying histology is just getting exposure to a lot of different slides. Um, for those of you who don't know, histology is essentially anatomy, but microscopic. And so looking at like, what do these particular cells of this gross anatomy look like under a microscope? That's histology. You have to take like really thin slides of anatomy, put it under a microscope, saying it the right way, and then learn like, all right, these cells are this, et cetera. Um, I feel like the, the key to histology is like just getting exposure to lots and lots of different slides. Because of course, like when you study like one particular flashcard, you get used to what that flashcard looks like and not necessarily the diversity of different slides that you can see. Um, and so I feel like the, the best thing there is like, yes, getting your book, but also like, actually looking at samples and getting a lot of diversity in samples. So love it. Awesome. Love that we have histologists here. Okay. So this research history is quite sad. Yep. Tuskegee. I'm sure everybody's thinking about that one. Uh, what's my other channel about histology? It's actually about anatomy and physiology, but histology has been like a uh, kind of a little like segment in there. It's called Corporis, C-O-R-P-O-R-I-S. It actually has um, more subscribers than this current channel. It's what I started with back in 2018. And um, it is very tailored towards folks who are in like biology, anatomy, pre-med programs. Um, the reason that I don't post history videos over there is because I actually tried to do that and it didn't get a lot of traction. I think that the viewers who watched my anatomy videos were there because of like search results. They were there because they needed homework help. And I find that like the audience here on this channel, they're like actually pretty passionate about medical history and like want a place to like see that specific topic. And so because the topics were like, I, they were overlapping, but they were so different in the audience, I decided to separate them. Um, also people on this channel are about 10 years older and mostly and, and uh, more concentrated in their geography. 
Uh, awesome. We got uh, Nabil uh, subscribing. That's really cool. Thank you. I have not uploaded in about a year because I feel just so much more interested in this particular channel. But thank you for that. All right. Three more books. Uh, no, two more books. We did Grays already. Um, we're going to go with, yeah, let's do this one. It's another work in progress. Um, about halfway through this one, this is a meaty one. This is called Insulin, the Crooked Timber. This is actually the UK version. Uh, I bought it at a store called Blackwell in Edinburgh when I was there this summer. This one is also a meaty one. This one weighed down my backpack in the airport. Um, but this is another incredibly in-depth history about the invention and progress of insulin, which I will make that video someday. That one is just such a, a heavy, thick, it's a, it's a thick topic in terms of like how much science we want to get into, how much like how much, how much of the politics, how much of the business and economics of insulin do we want to get into? And what do I really want this video to be? I'm leaning into tracing the price of insulin throughout time and seeing like how the technology that's been available will has impacted um, the, the price itself and the quality of the medicine. But right now I've gotten pat, like you probably have heard of like Frederick Banting and Best, um, some Toronto based researchers that often get credited with um, discovering insulin. But of course, like, discovery is such a loaded term that like there's so much that went on around Banting and Best and around the patent sale and, um, and and what drug producers did at the time after they got insulin. So this one, I'm about halfway through it. The next chapters seem to be about um, going into like the refinement and production of, of insulin uh, broad, more broadly. So like obviously like discovering the compound is going to be one thing, but actually making it available for public consumption is going to be another. Um, and then it's going to get into a section I'm really interested in which is Genentech. For those of you who have not heard, Genentech um, was able to produce insulin in some of the first like modified bacteria. It's so, like plasmid research kind of got like applied to um, biotech by this company called Genentech. And what I love is like they're a Bay Area based company too. So I'm trying to get in touch with them to see if we can do like a media thing and I can actually like film on their premises um, because they're in South San Francisco. So they're um, they're like pretty available. I, I they, they seem to be okay with media stuff like they have a little bit of a web presence which i think i think they would want to talk to me or at least like i think they would be willing to to do some kind of tour um but I, we'll see we'll see about that one so anyway insulin love this one again if you get it in the u.s it's going to have a different cover um it's called insulin the crooked timber um, by crooked hall or i'm sorry by kirsten hall this one has been fantastic so far i hope it ends up uh, finishing well too all right last one on my list and then i think we're ready to pick out some some recommendations from the stack uh, but this one is rabid. Uh, the subtext is right there. But basically, it's a cultural history of the world's most diabolical virus. This is about the history of rabies. This one I saw on a uh, in a bookstore in Santa Cruz a couple years back. Thought it was interesting, but never actually picked it up. Picked it up at the end of last year, and it has been fantastic. This one I would recommend as like a first history book, also because it is a great science story, but it also has it, it, it integrates the cultural history of disease more than any other book I've seen. Um, maybe a little bit with the great influenza, the, the 1918 influenza video uh, book. Um, this one was fantastic in terms of like, hey, like werewolves and vampires get their inspiration probably from dogs and bats that have been infected by rabies. I would never have thought about that. I would probably go with like Louis Pasteur and onward because rabies vaccine. Um, this one clearly, like I did turn into a video. It's I think right now the highest, uh, I think it is the highest viewed video on the channel at like 400 something thousand views. Um, but this one is a great book. This one was short, but again, like it's so dense with information. Before the before the notes, it is only 236 pages right around there. Um, so this one was a good quick read. Again, because I was taking so many notes, this one took me a while to read. But if you want something that is like a good story, a feel-good story, and something that is genuinely informative, I would um, highly recommend this one. This one, again, is kind of that middle ground of like, is it an intro book? Not necessarily. It's not like the fun kind of book like Quackery is, um, but I thought it was like deep enough to keep my attention, but also fast enough to uh, to stay engaging and, and make it so I couldn't like turn away. All right, let's get some questions. Then we'll rank, we'll, we'll get like our top three. It's hard to ever say like what your favorite book is or what the best book is, but we'll come up with three recommendations uh, by the end. Awesome, Steve D. Thank you for helping out. Corporus, you got it. Just watch The Killers of the Flower Moon. Okay, that's that new uh, movie that came out on Apple TV, right? Insulin plays a large role in that movie. Would love to watch a video about the history of it. Yep. A couple people have done videos about the history of insulin. Everyone has a different take, though. And I don't just like, I never want to just like make a Wikipedia article that turns into a video. I want to have like some kind of fresh take that people can't necessarily get elsewhere. And I feel like just going and doing the like 
here's how it was discovered, here's what it did, here were the experiments. I feel like that's kind of dry. And so I'm really, I need to read more deeply in order to have a unique take that I can then turn into a video. That's kind of my, my dilemma there. Um, Mie, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, not only do you include all the obscure details, sometimes obscure. I wish I could get into more obscure stuff. I feel like videos would be 60 minutes long if I got into like way obscure stuff. Uh, you're so engaging and passionate while talking. Impossible not to get stuck in this race. I appreciate it. I am like nothing if not earnest. And uh, I'm glad that that comes off in the videos. Fingers crossed it'll be often. Thank you. We do a history of the discovery of DNA. Ooh, I like that. I find molecular biology very interesting ever since I picked up Carp's Cell in Molecular Biology. I'm taking that as a, a textbook, I assume. That's great if like textbooks can hold your attention that well. Um, I might do this. Another another one of my YouTube friends that I like to shout out who is like an expert on genes is Alex Danis. Um, for those of you who have not heard of her, she is a legend in the educational YouTube space. She's been going at this for like 10 years now. She has, I think, switched more into a producer role these days and is much more popular on TikTok. And I, I love that she's able to switch platforms, going from like an OG of this platform to still engaging folks um, like on a completely new platform in a completely new style. So I, I got a ton of respect for her. Um, but she got a, C, a, a PhD from Stanford in uh, in genetics. Uh, what was your PhD in? She'll remind me. Um, but no, she's she's fantastic. I would love to collaborate with her to do that kind of uh, that kind of video. She is um, she's a history buff also and does a lot of TikToks for the Museum of Science. And so I'm sure that she would be a great person to collaborate with. Uh, also, if you guys have any, any recommendations for people to collaborate with, I always love learning from other people because they have expertises that I would not be able to, you know, to talk to otherwise. I feel like working with somebody is a great way to get to know them. Um, Desi is saying, I can talk about a fan's channel. Awesome. I'm an English major, but I've developed a bit of interest in medical related stuff. And your videos are really up my alley. Fantastic. Definitely going to have to read some of these. Ooh, okay. So that kind of circles back to um, the more like literature and rhetoric based question that somebody else had earlier. I think for that one, I am going to recommend On Immunity. Um, I think the last name of the author was Bliss. I forget the first name. Um, but that one was a short one, but it was it was far more poetic and personal than a lot of these other books are because that one was written from a firsthand um, point of view. And these are a lot of like, we read a lot of history, we read firsthand accounts, and we want to tell people about them, and that's really cool. But to hear somebody's firsthand account of how they experienced um, how they experienced a medical decision is always a fascinating uh, topic because that's you know everybody can relate to it. Everybody's had to make their own decisions. I think the second in that vein, looking at my stack of books here, would probably be would probably be be strange bedfellows. Actually, um, like I said, the author is a San Francisco based. Um, doctor and has talked to bummer alert coming up here uh because this person is san francisco based they've talked to a bunch of folks who worked in san francisco during the aids crisis and so they got firsthand accounts of what it was like to be a doctor in san francisco in the 80s treating a, a disease that nobody knew about uh or at least that people didn't there was so much fear surrounding the um surrounding the condition that like the emotion and the the firsthand experience of being a doctor or being a patient in san francisco at the time is just so it's so gut wrenching. Like you feel it when you read this book, and I feel like those two, on immunity and then strange bedfellows, um, are a great combination of like, you want some stories? Those are great ones. I, I feel like I feel like it, it strikes a good chord between being respectful, telling other people's stories, but not like overriding them. I hope that I hope that makes sense. Um, Nabil, I have to be so questioning. I love questions. Again, I, I had no idea how this was going to go, and I'm still speaking after 45 minutes, so we're doing it. Uh, will you also do history of psychiatry? It's what I'm going to be specializing in. Hey, congratulations that you're going to be specializing in in psych. Yeah, um, a shout out to another another YouTube friend, uh, History with Jay. I think she also goes by Psych History with Jay on TikTok and Instagram. Um, but she makes like psychiatry based videos because that is her specialty. I think she is Canada based, um, and she's getting into her. I think she's getting into another medical program at the time. Um, but she is fantastic for that kind of stuff. She makes mainly shorts, but she is progressing into like some some longer form videos. Um, would love to collaborate with her on something. I, you know, I actually watch her work. Like, again, I, I watch the videos that I'm recommending. Um, I do like, I love learning from all these folks. Um, if anybody gets her handle, by the way, is it psych history, psych doc history? I always forget what her handle is, but her, her name is Jay. Um, definitely go check those out. She does more psych stuff. Uh, okay, cool. Let's, we're going to move on. I'm a CNA and recently found out your videos. Love them. Thank you. That's fantastic. Devil's Drugs and Doctors, yep, I heard about that one. Uh, the story of the science of healing from medicine men to Dr. by Haggard, Howard Wilcox. Cool. Oh, gosh. I'll have to, 
I want to say I saw that one recommended on Amazon. Um, I've recently been going through and just like, I've been buying as many new medical history books as I can recently because I'm like, I love the books that I've read, but I want to just read as much as I can this next year. One, so I can bring more videos to you all, but just like, I, I want to, I like reading. I want as many books as I can. A video about the blue pill would be great. All right. So funny story. Uh, I have actually already made that video on Corpus. Um, not super in-depth on the history, but about like the intersection between erectile dysfunction and heart disease. And I did that one in collaboration with a fantastic YouTuber who I'm sure you all have heard of if you watch this channel, Rohan from Medlife Crisis. Um, this was back in 2019. Um, I, Corpus was pretty new. I think it had like four figures of subscribers, I think, like 5,000 subscribers or something. And um, Rohan had just, uh, he had just done his video with Tom Scott. He did a fantastic video about like a, a group of people who are able to hold their breath underwater for like 10 minutes. Um, fantastic video. And he's like, he's blown up ever since then. Um, but we met up at VidCon in the UK in February of 2019, I believe, and just like shot a video about uh, erectile dysfunction and Viagra um, and how like heart disease may, I'm sorry, heart disease may be indicated by erectile dysfunction. Obviously both are a blood flow issue. Uh, and so we got a little bit into the history of Viagra um, in that in that video. But yes, there's a, it, it was originally started, I believe, as a uh, as heart medication. And obviously, like the side effect of having a problem that lasts for four hours uh, is noticeable by a lot of the folks who took it. So interesting history there. I think that would be more of a short than a uh, than a full length video. Uh, but certainly, like that's a that is an interesting story. <clears throat> so thank you, Soleil. Okay. <clears throat> If there are no more questions for now, we're going to start to try to get some recommendations. And of course, like if y'all have recommend or uh, y'all have comments, keep at them. I'll have a hard out of an hour. Um, like I did not expect to be going this long, so this is a treat. All right, um, we should do a top three, huh? This is going to be completely arbitrary, and of course, like feel free to dispute all of these. But I think what I want to do is we just got to go off vibes, y'all. I think this is what we're going to do. I think for Let's go with depth first. I think if we want like a a, video, a book that is a good one to sink your teeth into, that is going to last you for a long time, that is going to be the, the greatest density and depth of information, I think it's got to be The Great Influenza. <clears throat> I think that you're going to get a ton of context with this one. So right now, here we go, this one, The Great Influenza by John Barry. Um, I think this is going to be the, the most amount of depth that you're going to get of the books that I recommended. Again, like there's plenty more that like y'all might have recommendations for. We'd love to hear them. But I think of the ones that I talked about today, this is going to be your pick if you want depth. Um, as we'll go, the, we'll go the flip side too then. We'll go with breadth. And I think this one is going to have to be a little bit like lowest common denominator. Let's imagine that somebody has never read medical history before and they want an introduction. I think that one is going to have to be Quackery, the one from the beginning. I think also because like this is a good looking book. Like it's got great, it's got, well, I think interesting graphic design throughout. It's got lots of cool uh, images that will show people like, oh yeah, cool old medicine bottle, cool botanical illustrations, um, stuff that belongs like in a museum. I think that this one is a, is a good, interesting book to nibble on. I think that this one would be my recommendation if you just needed something that was like a start, that was a, a shallow intro to the field. So this one is Quackery. And again, for depth, we're going to go with Great Influenza. And I feel like this is hard. How do we do this last recommend? How, I love all of them. How do you pick from your favorite children, you know? Um, you know what, I think, I, I think because I nerded out about it so much and I'm genuinely so excited about it, I think we got to give that last spot to just like, what am I interested in? I think it's going to have to be the good virus. I think it's going to have to be, again, it's a work in progress. I'm barely into it, but it's just so interesting so far. And I'm, I am excited to continue reading this one. Um, that I, I got to give it my last spot. So, okay, cool. We're at a good spot. I think we got these three, Quackery, Great Influenza, The Good Virus. We'll have those as our big recommendations. Obviously, I have links to all of these in the description. Um, I redid my list of uh, medical history books. These are all affiliate links too. So if you go click on them, like I get a, a couple cents if you actually buy any of them. Obviously, I appreciate it if you do. Um, but there's so many great, there's so many great books to read. I hope that I am continuing to review these um, in the future. Um, I'll stay on for another minute. If anybody has like other questions they want to ask or have any other recommendations, I would love to hear it. We talk about any field in science history and I'll watch it. There's no need to limit to medicine. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I agree. Um, I love like getting to bring in some of my characters from medical history into my physics lessons too. Um, so like we, we are introducing um, uh, Alessandro Volta as like, you know, bolts and, and circuits and stuff. And I made a short about him, but he 
is credited with like the discovery of an anatomy, like a physiology thing too. He basically had a bunch of people uh, grab each other's tongues in a line. And then one person on the end held onto a battery and the electricity obviously like formed a circuit throughout all of them. And because the, because the connection point was on the tongue, um, it ended up stimulating the acidy tasting taste receptors because basically hydrogen ions were coming off through like and conducting electricity. And that is interpreted by our taste buds as acid. And so um, people tasted sour during the experiment. And so like, was that part of the curriculum? Absolutely not. But I thought it was such an interesting tie into our lesson that I had to, I had to tell the kids. Um, not surprisingly, how I behave on YouTube is a lot like how I behave in the classroom, but I have to stretch it out over 85 minutes as opposed to like a condensed video. Thank you for the recommendation in time. That was awesome. Good. I'm glad you got some out of this, Steve. Again, I'd love to love to do this again in the future. This is a lot of fun. Um, would love to learn the software and everything too. I I just needed to get the first one done and it's going to be, you know, talking to webcam, but I'll get OBS. I'll get to do all the, the fun, um, the fun streaming software and stuff like that too. That's cool, y'all. Hey, thank you all for, for tuning in. I'm going to take off and I hope you all have a great weekend. Take care.